Well, get ready. It's Monday, April 29th, 2013, and you're about to have the best week ever. TV Next Edition. You're sitting in a room filled with the best looking, best smelling, and best everything people in the TV biz. And these people are brilliant, like Mensa level. Like, holy mackerel, how did they think of that, Brainiacs? And they're all here to talk about the future of TV. The old boob tube isn't just a device made to babysit your kids anymore. Oh, no. The idiot box is smarter, more dynamic, and more awesome than ever. And it's only going to get awesome-er. Social TV? Do you need friends for that? 20 years is not that long. I used to think Back to the Future was real. And as you can see, we still don't have hoverboards. So sit back, relax, and prepare to have your hair raised, toes tingled, and mind blown. This is Best Week Ever, and Hill Holiday's TV Next Summit begins right now. Hill Holiday. Please welcome Karen Kaplan and Mike Sheehan. Welcome everyone to Hill Holiday's third annual TV Next Summit. We couldn't be more excited about the day and we're thrilled to have you here with us. Thank you very much for being here. So if there's anyone here who still thinks of television as traditional media after today, you won't. Television is without a doubt one of the most rapidly changing spaces in our business today. And if you want proof, just think about some of the things that have happened in television since we gathered here last a year ago at the TV Next Summit. We have seen primetime shows on mainstream broadcast networks crowdsource their plot lines. CBS let the East and West Coast pick their own ending. It turns out the fans on the West Coast picked a different ending. Wrong as usual. <laughs> We've seen cable networks build properties that deliver larger audiences than their broadcast networks. And we all know about the popularity of The Walking Dead, because who doesn't enjoy a little flesh eating on a Sunday evening? But The Talking Dead, that is the talk show where guests discuss the episode that people have literally just seen, actually drew more viewers than any show on a major broadcast network during one week last year. We've seen critically acclaimed long-form drama produced and distributed by Netflix to satisfy our need for binge viewing. And if there was any doubt about the strong connection between TV and the social web, we've had moments where the big screen has just about melted the Twitter sphere. Who can forget the night the lights went out in New Orleans? And Oreo stepped in and stole the moment. Or the night one of our most revered celebrities sternly lectured an empty chair. And unfortunately, no one stepped in. He just kept talking and talking to that chair. Very unfortunate. So as you can see, it was, in fact, a very busy year for television. And while just about everything to do with television has been changing all around us, what we watch, how we watch it, how we talk about it, and the devices we use to watch it, one thing hasn't changed at all. TV is still the center of our media and entertainment lives. It's where we turn for the stories that move us and entertain us. And because of television's critical importance to all of us here in this room as a way to communicate and uh, with people we hope to influence, we really need a way to understand the changes that we're in the midst of. When everything's changing, it's helpful to have a construct to anchor your thinking, to help you interpret what's happening, and to help you make decisions about the actions you should take. At Hill Holiday, we use a deceptively simple philosophy to guide our strategic thinking, belief, and behavior. When we think about how a brand builds meaning in the modern era, we look at the intersection between what a brand believes and how a brand behaves, what a brand says and what it does, 
and the story it tells and the experience that people have with it both shape the perception that people have of a brand today. And when we think about how to create useful, interesting, entertaining solutions that people might actively choose to spend their time with, we look at the intersection of what people believe and how people behave. That's where we identify choice-based ideas. Like all interesting, challenging problems, the answer often lies in the messy middle where belief and behavior come together. So let's talk about belief and behavior as it relates to TV in 2013. Belief number one, television is dying. I don't want to steal your thunder, but I don't thunder. Where am I from? Thunder. <laughs> thunder. So all of you from, my, from all of you from, I can, I can actually hear my own accent there. So <laughs> all of you are from out of town, you know where you are right now. Um, Boston strong. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I don't want to steal your thunder, but I don't think we should, uh, we should have rented out this beautiful space and ask you all to spend your day if this one was true. It's not true. Uh, despite the allure of the old something is dying storyline, television is alive and well. It's where we spend more time than any other media, and as you can see, the time we spend with it is only increasing. According to Nielsen, we spend about 35 hours per week watching TV. Most people, belief number two is most people don't watch live TV, when in fact the vast majority of television is watched live, about 90% when you take the average of cable, cable and broadcast viewing. In 41% of the shows we record, we never watch later. Which reminds me, I still have to catch up on season one of Family Ties. Here's some juice, Jeff. I squeeze the oranges myself. <laughs> That is a very nice thing to do for someone, Mallory. I'm sure he appreciates it. Yeah, I really do. May I squeeze something for you? I mean, thank you very much. Well, uh, my work here is done. Ladies and gentlemen, our own John Dukakis playing the forgettable role of Jeff in the first season of Family ties. John, would you please stand up? Where are you, John? Sure, oh, John. they're way up in the corner pocket. Well done. Thank you very much, John. Uh, what, didn't you have a Believe. whip? Oh, you just, I just no, Karen and I were talking beforehand, John, that if you use that line at Hill Holiday as a senior vice president, You'd be in a deposition in about two weeks. <laughs> Don't tweet about that. <laughs> Belief number three is most people use other devices while watching TV. Ah, multitasking. Now, this is true. 77% of television watching occurs with another device in hand. And this has led a lot of smart people to think about how to involve people in storylines and advertising on screen. But this one is a little more complicated than it seems. Because as it turns out, 78% of the activity on the second screen is completely unrelated to the TV show itself, which proves once again that in today's world, we have to fight to earn people's attention. Yeah. Tell me, tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> Belief number four, social media helps ratings. The answer to this one, like the title of the Great, o great Oasis album, is definitely maybe. Oasis, really. Champagne Supernova. <laughs> <laughs> According to Nielsen, there's a correlation between tweets and ratings. And that's one of the reasons you see the networks incorporating hashtags in their programming. But causation is much less clear. Jimmy Kimmel pulled an interesting stunt during the Emmys that made this point. While Tracy Morgan lied on the floor, he encouraged viewers to tweet that Tracy had just passed out at the Emmys and to tune into ABC right now. You can see a spike in social chatter, but when you overlay minute-by-minute -minute ratings, you also see no increase in ratings. Although one demographic that did show a bump at this moment was males 12 to 24. A huge surprise, I'm sure. <laughs> All right, we think you get the point. What we believe about TV and how people actually behave aren't always the same thing at all. And understanding the reality and the intersection of belief and behavior can help us all navigate through this era of seemingly never-ending change. Today we have an incredible program packed with leading voices who will help us all understand the reality of TV today and TV next. Thank you for choosing to spend your day with us. We really appreciate it. We're thrilled to have you here. 
With that, we'll turn things over to your familiar hosts for the day, our own Stacy Shepparton and Mike Pru. Stacy, Mike. <laughs> Well, thank you, Mike and Karen, and uh, welcome to our third annual TV Next Summit. We move at a super fast pace here, and we've got an incredible lineup of some of the hottest topics that are happening in television right now. These are just a few. Plus, towards the end of the day, we're going to show you the results of our first ever TV Next hackathon that happened this past weekend, and you guys are going to vote for the best in show. And TV Next is about more than just television. It's really the one time of year where we have many of our clients and our media partners together under one roof. And so we really appreciate you taking the time to be here today with us. Um, we want to thank our sponsors, uh, Ramp, um, for making today such a success. We really appreciate your support. As well as all of our bronze sponsors that you can see here on the screen. And be sure to say hello to them over the course of the day. We want to give huge props to the Pulse Network because they are bringing TV Next live to the entire outer world. I've seen some tweets from all over the country um, and the world, including Sweden. Uh, so people are tuning in and want to welcome everyone that uh, is tuning in virtually. So we want you to tweet uh, using the TV Next hashtag and tweet often. Um, we'll be following the back channel throughout the day, and you'll see the tweets on either side on the big screens. Um, so please submit your questions and have a conversation and participate as part of the day. Be sure to also follow uh, Hill Holiday and remember that there are two L's in Holiday uh, because we will be taking questions exclusively from Twitter for our panel. So as people are speaking, be sure to tweet out your questions. We have a whole team back at the office monitoring uh, and uh, we'll be taking them live. If you need a Wi-Fi connection, here you go. Uh, here's your ID and password. It's TV Next, TV Next, all caps. And we took your advice from last year, and we have charging stations set up for you downstairs, so during your break, you can charge all of your devices. And if, uh, if you need, we don't read speakers' bios uh, because we really do move at a fast pace. So definitely check out tvnextsummit.com or your program. 